It's time for another trip. Only this time, I'm leaving my Tesla Model 3 unplugged at an airport for a week while I enjoy a whale watching adventure. I'm Frugal Tesla Guy and I'm going to share that whale watching experience while also documenting my battery's phantom drain. A while back, I posted a video explaining ways to help reduce phantom drain, especially if you need to be unplugged for several days or weeks for that matter. I will, of course, add a link to that video in the description below. Now, in that video, I only lost about 6% of my battery or 18 miles in a span of five and a half days while parked at an airport. However, in order to keep the phantom drain down, I sacrificed the security of the car by turning off sentry mode. I recently needed to park my car at the airport for a total of seven days. Only this time, I decided to keep sentry mode on. Now, because I knew I was going to lose a lot more range, and since I live two hours away from the airport, I stopped at a supercharger on the way to top off the battery and arrived at the airport with 73% or 227 miles of charge. Now, by the time I got back seven days later, I lost a lot more than just 6% of my battery. Now, if you wanna go straight to the results, I've included a timestamp where you can skip ahead or you can keep watching as I share my whale watching experience in Baja, Mexico. Before we get started, I would like to add a disclaimer that my Spanish is not perfect. I'm gonna have to say a few things in Spanish and well, it's probably not as polished as it should be. So forgive me in advance for mispronouncing any of these names. So after arriving in San Diego, we drove about an hour south of the Mexican border in Playa La Misión, just north of Ensenada. From there, we drove down to Guerrero Negro, which is where we stayed the night. Now the next morning, we drove to the Ojo de Liebre Lagoon, which is where the whales go to mate, calve, and relax before heading north to their Arctic feeding grounds. And they're typically there from December through April. Now upon getting on the boat and stopping at a few places, it seemed a little slow, but we were able to see a few whales within 20 feet from the boat, surfacing and blowing out mist from their blowholes. It was actually quite amazing to see. It's coming to us. Now this went on for about 45 minutes, and then... Just go for it, buddy. Go for it. Do it. Oh. Okay. Isn't that amazing? So cool. There's a ball. <laughs> there goes your hat. <laughs> Four whales approached our boat and stayed with us for over 30 minutes. And in that time, we were able to connect with the whales as they continued to surface near the boat. And even though at any point in time, any one of these whales could have flipped over our boat, they didn't. Because these are gentle giants and they were very careful not to rock the boat too much as they grazed the bottom of the boat. They rolled over on their sides, waving to us with their fins, while also moving close enough to catch a glimpse of us by making eye contact. My son, niece, and nephew all touched a whale for the first time, and my wife was even able to get close enough for a kiss. Our guide told us he had never seen the whales stick with one boat for such a long period of time. In fact, we ended up leaving the whales because their time was up. A truly remarkable experience none of us will ever forget.
That same day, we drove down to a town called San Ignacio and stayed the night there. And the next day we went on another whale watching tour. And even though we got to see several whales, the experience didn't even come They're close to what we experienced the first time. That being said, it was truly a remarkable experience. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we drove 441 miles south of the border. But if you want to save yourself 183 miles, you can fly into Laredo, rent a car or take a bus up to the whale tours. Now on the way back up, we stayed at a hotel in a town called Catavina, where there was a Tesla destination charger. In fact, there was also one in Guerrero Negro and San Ignacio. And since there's a supercharger in Ensenada, a trip down to these places in a Tesla is very much doable. However, I think I'll wait until I have my Cybertruck because the roads are rough. And since it was raining, there was a lot of mud and flooded roads as well. Now, while I was enjoying a trip down Baja's Highway 1, my Tesla was sitting in an airport parking garage unplugged for seven days. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it sat for five and a half days during my trip to Milwaukee, Wisconsin and lost a small percentage of charge to Phantom Drain, mainly because I turned off sentry mode. This time, it was seven days, and wanted to see what would happen if I left it on, and the results were drastically different. Day one, upon parking the car, I had 73% or 227 miles of charge in my battery. About 24 hours later, I was down to 188 miles. That's a loss of almost 40 miles or 12%, I was already worried that I, my battery would be drained by the time I got to it seven days later. Now, since I had limited internet access in Mexico, I couldn't check the battery in exact 12 or 24 hour intervals. It all depended on when and where I had service. And that said, about 12 hours later, I only lost eight more miles of range and was down to 180 miles. The next morning, I dropped to 169 miles of range. That was only an 11 mile drop in a 24 hour period, so things were looking better. Quite a difference from the first night. Day four, I was down to 150 miles that morning, making a 19 mile drop in a little more than just 24 hours. Day five, I dropped another 23 miles. Day six, 24 miles, and day seven, 22 miles. Now once I returned to the car Saturday night, I was down to 68 miles or 22% left in the battery. That means I lost a total of 159 miles or 51% of the battery in just seven days. Now what I find interesting is the fact that I lost almost 40 miles in the first 24 hours, but two days later, I only lost 11 miles in a 24 hour period. And then it seemed to level off to just over 20 miles per day. Now this averages out to a loss of about 22 miles per day, which comes out to a little less than a mile per hour, which according to my stats app is my average and unfortunately high compared to other stats app users. Now what this means is I lose a lot more to Phantom Drain than most people. Now according to stats app, most people only lose about a quarter of a mile of range per hour. So if that was the case for me, rather than losing 159 miles in seven days, I would only lose 42 miles. However, what we don't know upon looking at Stats App is if those people with the lower loss to Phantom Drain are actually using Sentry Mode or not. But even at a half a mile of loss per hour, I would only lose 84 miles to Phantom Drain in a week. A look at the temperatures doesn't show much of an extreme. The average daytime high was about 67 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average overnight low was about 45 degrees. Not cold or hot enough to have a major impact on the battery. So in conclusion, I am without a doubt pretty unhappy with my Phantom Drain Rate, which has been a thorn in my side since day one, and have yet to really figure out why it's so high. That said, until I figure out a solution, I will most likely have to turn off sentry mode to help preserve the battery. 
Now, also keep in mind, I live over two hours away from the airport and I have two supercharging options once I leave the airport to go home. Either go six miles out of my way or 50 miles into the trip home. Now the latter is preferable, but I didn't have enough range this time around. Now another solution would be to plug it into one of the many level two chargers in the parking garage. The problem is they're all usually occupied. With the growth of the EV industry, one thing I would like to see is not necessarily more level two charging stations, but a lot more level one trickle charging options. Now, especially for people parking for five days or more, a trickle charge would be more than enough to keep the charge at a respectable level. Now, instead of sprinkling them throughout the parking lot, it would be great to see a section for EVs only, making it easier to find rather than wasting time searching for an open charger. I wouldn't even mind paying a little more for the charging option. Well, that wraps up yet another video, and this was kind of like two videos in one. I was able to show you the Tesla side, which is pretty much what this channel is all about and the reason why a lot of you come here. And I was able to show you a phantom drain in a Tesla Model 3 battery while unplugged for seven days at the airport and leaving sentry mode on. But the reason I was parked at that airport was because I went on a whale watching trip in Baja, Mexico. And I was able to share that experience with you as well. So I hope you enjoyed either one or the other or both parts of the video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you found the information in here useful, you can of course subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe button below. Well, thank you all so much for watching and stay positively charged.